Welcome to Trippy Commentaries and our WWE Raw Reactions. This is part two. Make sure you guys watch part one first, of course. Let's jump right into it. We have a lot of things to get to in this episode of Raw. We should mention that it finally happened. The Funkadelic or Funkadelics or Funkadactyls. Fucking whatever the hell they're called. Actually did break up Retro Bread. It finally happened. Well, this was coming on for a long time now. I'm surprised it took this long for it to actually happen. Now, we are not quite sure if they're totally done. I mean, there was definitely a spat, or whatever you, if you want to call it today, but... Didn't uh, look good. No, it didn't look good. And Naomi uh, really kind of got the upper hand and beat the shit out of the other one. Yeah, so. and uh, of course they faced off with Paige and AJ Lee teaming up. Uh, really odd match, and Paige and AJ Lee won. Uh, I think we'll probably see a championship match out of those two females very soon. Uh, C-Dub, of course, is joining as always. And we will start off just by mentioning Dolph Ziggler faced off with Alberto Del Rio. I was really hoping Dolph would get his second win in a row on, well, of course, Raw's. I was hoping. I was seeing it. I thought it was going to happen. Sorry. But, unfortunately, Fandango, who is Fandango. the guest commentator started dancing on the, the commentary table, which was got to be one of the dumbest things, you know, that you'd ever see on Raw. It distracted uh, Dolph Ziggler, so it, it was just a terrible situation. And it actually transitioned, uh, you know, of course, the Fandango dancing to another couple of uh, Fruit Loops, Goldust and Stardust. So it was a really crazy transition there. At least they kept it all in one nice segment for us and got it out of the way. I don't know what the writers were smoking when they came out with that stuff. But, uh, yeah, that happened. Uh, let's get to a real match. In fact, this was a crazy match. This was a much-anticipated match between Chris Jericho and The Miz. We saw both guys make their triumphant return last week. I think Chris Jericho had the upper hand last week, but this was an official match where Bray Wyatt did not interfere. Corey, what happened in this epic matchup tonight? Yeah, we saw a great reaction for Jericho. Uh, lukewarm, pretty shitty shitty reaction for The Miz. Honestly, guys, quite frankly, The Miz sucks. He's fucking trash. I don't want to see him on TV anymore. Who cares? Chris Jericho beat him after he punched him right in the fucking face. It was stupid. We heard Miz's awful chance. Everybody fucking hates The Miz. The Miz sucks. Uh, Jericho wins. That was awesome to see. Love Jericho. Walls of Jericho submission victory. Bray Wyatt interrupts and is on the stage in his uh, rocking chair. Says we're all waiting for Jericho to save us. Bray Wyatt wanted to know how Jericho is going to save a universe whenever he can't even save himself. He went on to say that his words will not protect him from Bray Wyatt and the Wyatt family. And uh, the people that used to be Jerichoholics now sing a different tune. But before Bray Wyatt could continue, we heard Chris Jericho in uh, a throwback to uh, classic Y2J ask Bray Wyatt if he would please shut the hell up. Went on to call Bray Wyatt uh, Quiet Wyatt, which of course was a nice 80s hair metal reference. Jericho, a big fan of... Uh, Wyatt Riot, the band there, in case anybody didn't catch that. Jericho threatened to fight Bray Wyatt right then and there. Of course, Rowan and Harper uh, mysteriously show up on the ramp. Jericho hesitates. We heard some more dueling chants between Y2J, Y2J, and the chorus of he's got the whole world in his hands. Guys, this is going to be an awesome feud once they finally face off in a big-name match on pay-per-view. RJ, do you think that Chris Jericho, who as a veteran here is, you know, he's a guy who's coming in and really elevating Bray Wyatt, and I think Bray Wyatt makes Jericho look good too. But at the end of the day, do you think, RJ, that Chris Jericho can defeat Bray Wyatt one on one? No, I definitely do not think so. I totally think that Bray Wyatt is going to defeat Chris Jericho, hopefully at the upcoming Battleground. That's what I'm really hoping for, seeing as uh, Retro Brett and I will be there. But, uh, you know, I learned a lot from Corey, who has a lot of knowledge about wrestling. I mean, he's, yeah. he's like an encyclopedia when it comes to, to wrestling. And uh, one thing he's talked about quite a bit was these bigger-name guys getting 
the younger up-and-coming guys over. And I feel like Bray Wyatt has been losing to these other guys, such as Cena and, you know, of course, The Shield. And he's been losing, but he's also getting a huge reaction. He reminds me a lot of Stone Cold in some aspects where he's doing the bad guy thing, but he's got such a kick-ass persona that you want to root for him. He's great on the mic. In fact, he might be the best thing going on the mic, better than John Cena, Since better than all of them. So he needs somebody truly epic to put him over for once. And I think Chris Jericho is the guy. I mean, if Bray Wyatt defeats Chris Jericho in an epic match, it might elevate him even more. He's already getting a huge reaction, but I think that that victory might propel him to WWE champion status. What do you think, Retro? Well, I think um, it doesn't matter if Bray Wyatt's losing. He's bizarre, and that's what gets people on his side. He People dig him because he's just out there and weird. And nothing like that is, well, I wouldn't say nothing, but things like that haven't been seen in a very long time in WWE, so. Good point. I mean, he's I, very unique. I think that's what draws the people to him. And as far as Corey went, he was saying something about uh, people singing a different tune. The tune that Jericho Hawks are singing now is We've got the whole world in our hands. Yeah, I was, uh, I was a little disappear uh, disappointed they didn't start singing it. I was thinking uh, the Canadians were going to start chanting, of course, the whole world in his hands song there. That would have been awesome. Unfortunately, we did not hear that yet. We'll see what happens on next week's Raw when it comes to Bray Wyatt versus Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho successfully defeated The Miz now. He got that out of his way. Hopefully, that puts him on a one-way course to fight Bray Wyatt. He needs to fight someone better. We'll see if he, he's going to have to get, like, maybe someone to help him out to take out the Wyatt followers, much like we've seen with Cena, where, the you know, the Usos came out. So we'll see what comes of that. Maybe it's the Usos all over again. The Usos might be helping out Chris Jericho. I, I guess we'll will. see what happens so. there. Uh, this was a crazy event here, Retro Brett. Cesaro lost again to Kofi Kingston. This was a rematch of what we saw last week. And he lost. I mean, this is two weeks in a row. I thought it was a fluke last week on Raw Reactions. I said it was a surprising outcome, but now it's back-to-back -back weeks. Kofi Kingston wins. Cesaro loses. Aye, tough loss for him. Well, I think this is just, um, just to emphasize and improve Cesaro and show people the darker side of Cesaro. I mean, he, he lost to Kofi Kingston twice. Kofi, Kofi Kingston is a great competitor. But uh, someone like Cesaro can't, or it's unacceptable to lose to someone like that twice. And, you know, he's going to go crazy and beat the shit out of Kofi Kingston and yeah. uh, show the darker side of him. He did it last week, but this week Big E came out to uh, have Kofi Kingston's side there. It looks like we might have a maybe a tag team forming there. We'll see. Now, Corey, oh. what do you take out of this? Is this more of, of course, Kofi Kingston on the rise, a former... Uh, you know, pretty respectable fighter here, maybe getting a second chance at, at climbing up the ranks. Or is it just about Cesaro kind of slipping here for another week in a row? Uh, I don't think it's about either one of those things, guys. Uh, I think the whole purpose of this, as you kind of touched on, was to see Cesaro come out and really brutalize somebody. We've seen, of course, after two weeks in a row, he's got uh, rolled up for a victory kind of almost out of nowhere by Kofi Kingston. And two weeks in a row, he has continued his, the assault after the match. Um, this week, we saw Big E come out to kind of cut off the post-match assault. Apparently, Big E had a confrontation on SmackDown with Cesaro. Um, you know, I mean, it's, it's cool to see Kofi uh, featured on the card. But after so long of him being misused, I mean, I have to feel like this is just a case of him being used to get Cesaro over a little bit more. The two do have an awesome uh, chemistry, an awesome blend of styles, Kofi being high-flying, and Cesaro with the more groundwork, the devastating uh, high-impact offense like we saw tonight with that huge gorilla press into a gut buster over his knee. That was so sick. Um, you know, uh, time will tell what happens as far as these guys. I do believe both of them are now entered in the Intercontinental Title Battle Royal. Uh, we, of course, have also uh, we've had quite a few other entrants into that. I definitely look forward to seeing who comes out of Battleground, the Intercontinental Champion. They very much, uh, very well could be. 
Cesaro is your new Intercontinental Champion coming out of Battleground. Yeah, I'm disappointed at the back-to-back losses by Cesaro, of course, at Raw, but uh, I still think he's the favorite heading into that matchup for the Intercontinental Championship. He's going to have a lot of guys gunning for him, that's for sure. Uh, Bo Dallas came out and fought against El Torito. I mean, El Torito challenged Bo Dallas. Apparently, you know, Bo Dallas is not going to back off of any challenge, even if it's from a uh, a little guy there. I mean, this this was an epic event, Corey. This was like watching the moon landing all over again. It was an inspiration for all of us, and I think we're all a little bit You're smarter for watching agree. that. Oh, most definitely, man. I mean, that was... Uh... You know, I definitely had a tear in my eye. That was one of the most beautiful, epic, uh, you know, contests and uh, stories that have ever been told inside of a WWE ring. I give it six stars out of five. Uh, You can forget about the Ric Flairs, the Harley races, the Ricky Steamboats. All those guys are nothing compared to the technical expertise of one El Torito. Yes, congratulations, Bo Dallas. You deserve it. Uh, this might have been a new low for WWE Raw. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the main event tonight. It was John Cena versus Seth Rollins. Um, actually, before we get to that, I do have to mention, of course, um, you know, like I said, we had some team chemistry issues that erupted as the uh, Raw went through. They kept going backstage. They even went back to a segment before the match started where Seth Rollins was talking to John Cena and John Cena said something that I thought was pretty crazy. He said, Seth Rollins, I see what the authority sees in you. So I really think coming from John Cena, I think that's high praise, man. I think that makes Seth Rollins a legitimate championship contender here. But did he win in this matchup? We all know he's got that money in the bank, uh, you know, suitcase that he carries around. He is. Mr. Money in the Bank. Corey, break down this main event for us. Yeah, this was a great match. Uh, That was definitely a great backstage uh, segment there, a little exchange between Rollins and Cena. Both guys are gold on the mic, and as you said, uh, Seth has a very bright future in the company. Um, It was a solid match. I mean, Rollins is uh, one of the quickest guys out there these days. He has a really unique offense. Uh, it was kind of short with those two as far as their, uh, you know, their match. Uh, pretty much towards the end there, we saw Kane come out, his music hits, and it sort of distracted John Cena. Uh, and at that point, we saw, of course, leaving um, John Cena open. We saw Randy Orton ambush John Cena from uh, from the crowd. Uh, we, then we saw Kane, Rollins, and Orton continue the assault on John Cena. But then out comes Roman Reigns. He kind of took his time, but uh, Kane sort of met him there in the aisleway and got met with the devastating Superman punch. He nailed Randy Orton with one as well. Uh, Rollins, Seth Rollins, then cut Rain, uh, Roman Reigns off with the Money in the Bank briefcase. He blasted him in the back. Nailed John Cena too. And then at that point, guys, we saw. The big tease. Will Seth Rollins cash in? And he kind of waited for just a second, and then sure enough, he called for referee Charles Robinson. He kind of took too long to actually ring the bell once again. This is two weeks in a row we've seen uh, a bit of a delayed reaction on the cash in. But before he could, Dean Ambrose attacks Seth Rollins, makes good on his promise to prevent Seth Rollins from cashing in until he gets his revenge first from Seth Rollins turning his back on him and the Shield. Guys, I know both of you are going into uh, Battleground, certainly looking forward to this as much as I am. Coming out of tonight's match, was there anything big that you guys took out of this uh, in relates to who you think might be the WWE champion after Battleground is all said and done? I'm definitely looking at Roman Reigns here. I mean, going into tonight, as I mentioned in Part 1, John Cena was my heavy favorite despite going against three big dogs, of course, at Battlegrounds. But tonight, I think, might have pushed the the, uh, favor a little bit towards Roman Reigns because the very last thing that happened was Roman Reigns speared Kane, kind of saving John Cena there again. (laughs) And then they had a little friendly exchange at the same time. Of course, it was 
foreshadowing what's to come. These guys have a friendly relationship apparently right now, but it cannot stay that way because Roman Reigns seems like an unstoppable force. His Superman punch is completely devastating. He takes out everybody right away. That is very rare in the WWE. I mean, it, it harkens back to Stone Cold coming in and giving everybody the stunner. I mean, this is crazy the way Roman Reigns can completely take over at any moment, Retro Brett. Well, to me, the match at Battleground is a two-horse race. It's Cena versus uh, Roman Reigns. The other two are just unfortunately happen to be in the match. We will go on strike if uh, Randy Orton comes out on top in this one. But let's, uh, but that's a topic for another time. Um, yeah. I'm going to say Roman Reigns definitely looks very, very dominant these days. And uh, I, I wouldn't be at all surprised and wouldn't be sad if he beats my favorite, favorite wrestler, John Cena. Yeah, I mean, we're going to have to do our preview coming up next week because this pay-per-view is swiftly approaching. But as of right now, Retro Brett, I have to believe you still think John Cena is the favorite, right? Um, well, I always think he's the favorite. Uh, he's he's a guy that the company can turn to just like that, and they did when they didn't have anyone to put the tile on. They said, hey, let's put on Cena. Yeah. He's a horse that can always run, run with the title, and so... I just hope they don't rest on that, you know what I mean? I mean, uh, I, I like uh, I mean, I mean, like John Cena just as much as anybody else, but uh, variety is the spice of life, and yes. uh, we definitely don't want it to be in John Cena's hands for too long. Corey, uh, I know you asked us the question, did it change anything, and do we have a, you know, who are we looking at? What about for yourself? Did it change anything for you? And as of right now, Who's your favorite going into that, that championship matchup at Battleground? Is it possibly Kane who's your favorite? Uh, definitely not. <laughs> um, I don't think Kane really has much of a, ch much of a chance here. Uh, I think kind of as you said, it's a two-horse race between Cena and Reigns. But there's one dark horse you have forgot to mention, and that is Seth Rollins as the Money in the Bank briefcase holder. He has the rights to a WWE Championship title shot at any time he wishes. And I fully expect to see a Battleground if, I mean, he may or may not actually get to cash it in. But, I mean, we've seen him try to go two weeks in a row after John Cena was sort of hurt and cash it in, but it just didn't work out. I expect at Battleground, Seth Rollins, to tr at least try to cash in the money in the bank. I don't know who he's going to cash it in on. I would venture to guess probably Roman Reigns. He's got to be my favorite. Uh, and I'm not sure necessarily if Seth Rollins is going to win that, but uh, I think it'd be a great way to start off things hot. Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, tie all those guys together into the title picture. Let's go ahead and get the youth movement moving here. John Cena is old hat 15 times he's had it. Uh, as you said, he can have the belt at any time, but I gotta agree. It, you can't leave it on him too long, or else the crowd is gonna start yawning. And, yep. Uh, I look forward to battleground and seeing where the WWE title lies afterwards, for sure. That is uh, for sure. We definitely cannot wait for that matchup. We will be there in attendance. Thank you guys so much for joining us for this episode of Raw Reactions. If you are new to the channel, please make sure to subscribe. We will, of course, be giving you our Raw Reactions every Tuesday. We break down all of the latest breaking news in the WWE. So stay tuned here, Trippy Commentaries. We are doing a top 10 list right after this, so we'll be updating that very shortly and releasing that for you guys, unveiling our official top 10 WWE wrestlers for July 2014, heading into Battleground. Once again, I'm RJ for Retro Brett and Corey. Thanks you so much for joining us, guys. Please uh, hit the like button if you can. And stay tuned for more WWE coverage at Trippy Commentaries. Peace out, guys.